Can you read music? Why even bother? If you're playing by yourself for fun or just playing with a band, is it a skill that you're ever going to need? There's been a myth going around for years that you had to choose either between being a good ear player or a good reader. This is complete fiction. A good working musician should have both of these skills developed and should expect to use either of them at any point in time. Reading music allows you to play with many more musicians across many different genres and with far less rehearsal time than you would need. Reading music also gives you immediate access to centuries worth of music, methods, and beautiful melodies and has the potential to make you a way better musician. We can all work on our reading. Today I'm going to talk about the different levels of reading and give you some tips on how you can level up from where you're at right now. Check this out. This is the most basic kind of reading, chord charts. This is like looking at a lead sheet minus the melody. Charts like this allow us to use our ears and our instinct to come up with creative parts on our own right away. Breaking into this level requires a few different things. First, you have to know the notes on your instrument. When the music says E, you have to know how to play an E on your instrument. Secondly, you have to know how to follow along with each measure. Last, you should know the difference between different chord qualities and be able to play them on your instrument, at least major and minor. Maybe you've played over a lyric sheet like this in church. It's basically the same idea. This level allows for the most creativity because it's giving us the least amount of instruction. If you're having trouble here, again, you have to know the notes on your instrument immediately you have to be able to follow along with measures, in four in this case, and you have to know the difference between major and minor chords on your instrument. Now our arrangement has hits. Hits are rhythmic figures that are played together by more than one member of the band, often the rhythm section. The chart is still giving us minimal information, chords, but now it's asking us to play rhythmic figures with the rest of the group in certain bars. Look at measure three. This is a special type of notation called rhythmic notation. What you're seeing is not a note on a bar, but a rhythmic figure written out underneath a chord. Rhythmic notation is just telling us Use these chords played in this rhythm. To get past this level, you need to know what rhythms look like on paper and how they sound. Reading rhythms is very much like reading words in this respect. When you read a book, you don't read words phonetically. You don't sound out each vowel and consonant. You see the word or even part of the word and you recognize it and process it. Rhythms are very much the same. We don't necessarily tap out every rhythm that we see, but we learn to recognize patterns and how different rhythms sound. Until you can recognize these different rhythms, I'd highly recommend taking one rhythm in one beat and playing it over and over again until you're familiar with that rhythm before moving on to another. It's very similar to learning a new word. Check out my rhythm study linked below in the description for some easy exercises to help you build your rhythm and your ability to recognize rhythms on paper. Eventually, you'll add to your rhythmic vocabulary and be able to pick up on rhythms quickly when you see them. It takes practice, but you have to keep doing it in order to get better. we 
introduce some reading on the staff. Most jazz arrangements you play will be very much like this. There's a section that has chord changes where you're allowed to be more creative with what you play, and then there might be a section with written notes where you have to play something that the arranger has planned, or maybe even double something that someone else in the band is playing, as in this case. Navigating this level requires that you can read rhythm, like we did in the last level, but also that you have knowledge of the notes on a staff. Here's the short version. The musical staff is just a five line, four space graph that indicates pitch by line or space, key signature, and clef. Ours is bass clef, or F clef, and time signature. In this case, we're in common time or four beats per measure. From low to high, the lines are G, B, D, F, A, or good boys do fine always. The spaces from low to high are A, C, E, G, or all cows eat grass. This is what each open string of a four string bass looks like on a musical staff. When working with students learning how to read music for the first time, I found it best to work with simple diatonic exercises. Learning how to navigate in one key and within one octave will help you start to make associations between the notes on the page and what's actually happening in your left hand. Below is a link to some diatonic exercises that I like to use that follow these rules. Remember the point is to start to make associations between your left hand and what's on the page. Check them out. Leveling up from here requires that you can read rhythms and notes in at least one key down to about eighth note rhythms in various combinations. This one is pretty written out. It's not uncommon to see bass lines like this presented to you when you have to read music. The line is more composed and there's less room for creativity than there was when you just had chord changes. Usually when I play a chart and I see that there are no chord changes and only written notes, to me that's the arranger saying, I want you to play exactly what's written on the page and don't make anything up. Also note, we have some accidentals in this example. Understanding what an accidental is means understanding the key that you're in. Always think of the seven notes that are in your home key and when you hit an accidental, make the adjustment. These are ties. They tell us to combine the two notes together. Tied rhythms like these are easier when we break them down. What I do is I see the rhythm first without the ties. Next, match the notes to the rhythms. Finally, when you have the notes in the rhythm, play it and then put the ties back in for the final result. At any given time when I've played a gig that requires reading, it can vary from level one type reading, to even more extreme versions of level four type reading. At some point, if you want to broaden your horizons, musically speaking, you have to deal with reading music. Here are a few tips. Number one, take your time. What might seem impossible to play is often just a little too fast for us to handle right now. Find a tempo where you can hear it cleanly and process it cleanly and play through it and then work up from there. Number two, put the bass away. Spend some time looking at the music without your bass getting in the way. Notice the time signature. Notice the key signature. How many measures are there? Are there repeat signs? Where does the DS go? When do you go to the coda? Are there any tricky lines or chord changes you need to be aware of? Take a clear mental picture of the chart so that you can be ready when you're in front of it with your instrument. Number three, bring a pencil. Don't ever be too proud to pencil in note names or where downbeats occur in a bar. I personally write in beat counts. I make sure I know those accidentals are there. I circle things freely. Remember, it's all a graph just to help you play music. Write in whatever you need to help you play easier. There are no style points in music, but there is a finish line. Number four, read, read, 
read. Read anything and everything you can get your hands on in any clef. Reading is not like riding a bike. You can't get better at doing it unless you're consistently trying to improve at it. Famous studio musicians have often said that after playing two months straight, their reading chops were on fire. And after taking two months off, their reading chops felt really rusty. The internet has unlimited resources for sheet music. Get whatever you can. Beethoven, Marvin Gaye, Scriabin, Charlie Parker, whatever works. But you don't have to take my word for it. You get fed up, especially for the young players that can already play. I mean, how many guys you know on the street and they all say, wow, yeah. I say, how's your reading? <laughs> uh, well, I can read a little bit. Hey, what do you mean a little bit? Man, if a guy says that, you know he can't read. Right. You know what I mean? That's I mean, it. you got to sit down and practice reading. It's hard. I mean, I used to spend hours a day just with little, any book I could get a hold of. Mm -hmm. Treble clef, any clef, bass clef, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but just any type of music I could get my hands on just to, to get in it. Always remember that reading music is in service of playing it. Being a great reader and a great musician don't always go hand in hand. You don't need to read one lick of music in order to play great. That being said, don't ever let reading music intimidate you. Reading music will only broaden your horizons. Reading music will only open more doors for you. Reading music will give you access to music you might never normally get to play. Reading music will allow you to play with more musicians in more situations than you ever would have before. And in the end, reading music will help you get better. So what are you waiting for? Thanks for hanging in there. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please click on that subscribe button so that you can get all original jazz bass centric content coming at you every single week, as fast as I can do it. Until next time, take care of yourself. And please, love your neighbor.